Well, we're still talking about ecology, and now we're going to talk about energy and how that energy flows through the environment. So it all starts with the sun. All of our energy comes from the sun. That's our heat energy, our um, solar energy, and our food energy. So the plants, they take in that sunlight and they use photosynthesis and they change that sunlight into energy for the plants. So this would be the first level. And then animals and insects eat those plants. So this would be our second level. And our second level would be things that eat the plants. And these would basically be herbivores. They just eat the plants, okay? Birds would eat berries and nuts and things like that, but they also would eat the insects that are eating the plants. So these would be our third level organisms. So they would eat, they might eat some of the plants, but they are also eating the insects. And, um, and so they are on the third level because they're carnivorous. But then we have the fourth level and these are the true carnivores. These are the big carnivores. These are the animals that are only eating other animals. So this is our fourth level. And then we also have the decomposers, okay? So the decomposers, we don't actually put on a level by themselves, but they are very important to the environment because they decompose pretty much all of these things that have died off. All right, so we're gonna take a closer look at what's on these different levels. And on this first level, we will have plants, and we'll have algae, and we will have some photosynthesizing bacteria as well. So our first trophic level is anything that um, uses photosynthesis to obtain energy. Our second trophic level would just have herbivores. So any um, grazers that eat the plants, insects and caterpillars and things like that that eat the plants are on the second trophic level. The third trophic level would be anything that eats the things on the second trophic level. Okay, so animals on the third trophic level would depend on, um, on the smaller animals that are on the second trophic level. So they would be eating the insects, they might be eating the mice there. Um, the fourth trophic level would be things that eat what's on the third trophic level. Okay, so um, the fourth trophic level would be the large predators, the ones, the kind of the top of the food chain predators. Okay, the next thing is the food webs and um, Food webs are made so that we can see how all of these animals are interacting through um, predation or eating, you know, what they eat, things like that. And one thing about a food web that is kind of interesting is the arrows, they go up. And this is basically to show that the grass goes into the rabbit, so the rabbit's eating the grass. It, um, some people get a little confused by that. They think, why isn't the arrow pointing down because the rabbit eats the grass. Well, it's kind of showing that the grass goes into the rabbit, the grass goes into the squirrels, into the mice, so on and so forth. Um, and, and the thing about a food web is that it can get a little messy because a lot of animals, especially when you get to these top predators, they eat lots of different animals. They don't just eat one thing. And you'll see that it's a little bit like a web over here because um, the spider's eating this bug, the birds are eating this type of bug, snakes might eat this bug. So there's quite a few things that will eat um, one type of insect. And so food webs can get a little bit complicated or a little bit confused. Um, just know that whenever you see a food web and these arrows are pointing up, that means that the fox is eating the rabbits, or you could look at it as the rabbit goes into the fox, and that helps you keep track a little bit better. 
And then we also have an energy pyramid. So this is really looking at those trophic levels. But an interesting thing about the energy pyramid is that each level loses about 10% of the energy as it moves up. So if something's eating um, the producers, the ones on the lowest energy level, the grasses or, or um, other plants, well, they're getting a lot of energy because that's where most of the energy is contained, is in that level of, of producers. But as you move up from that level, you lose 10%. So notice it goes from 1,000 kilocalories to 100 kilocalories. So if you're eating these primary consumers, you're, you're still getting quite a bit of energy, but not near as much as if you were eating a producer. And then up to the secondary consumers, again, 10% drop in the energy that's contained there. And so these animals here don't contain as much energy as these animals here do. And then you go up to the tertiary consumers, those top predators, and they, they have 10% less energy again. And so what we see here, um, it kind of makes sense because we'll look at this and, and these insects, they eat the grass, but they don't have to eat a huge amount. They don't have to eat a lot of that biomass. Um, secondary consumers that are eating the primary consumers, they tend to eat more. They, ha they have a higher dietary intake or calorie requirement, and so they have to eat more. And again, these top predators have to eat a lot more of these secondary consumers to get the energy that they need. We're gonna talk about the water cycle. Um, we're actually gonna talk about several different cycles in the environment. And the first one we're gonna talk about is the water cycle. And this shows that water cycles continuously throughout our environment. So what we have here, what this is showing, is the water comes down from the atmosphere. So we have ice and snow and rain. And so we're getting water coming down from the atmosphere. Um, as this ice and snow melts, we have some runoff that goes down into these lakes and streams and eventually comes out here to the oceans. We also have um, this rain that basically percolates down through the soil, and so we get the water table underneath, and water tables also have a bit of a flow. They will flow into streams, and they'll flow into the ocean as well. But then there's this evaporative process so we have evaporation that puts the water back into the atmosphere. Another thing, another way that the water gets back into the atmosphere is plants do something called transpiration. And as they pull the water up through their roots and into their stems and into their leaves so that they can do photosynthesis, well, that water actually leaves their leaves. And that's called transpiration, and that actually puts a lot of water back into the atmosphere. All right, the carbon cycle. This shows how carbon cycles throughout our environment. Um, we have carbon in the atmosphere as gases. Um, we have the biosphere carbon store, which just means that every living thing on Earth, it, it's major molecule is carbon based and so we have this biomass that is made up of carbon so that's a carbon storage on earth we also have a lithosphere carbon store and that's all the carbon that's stored in the earth itself and these um, resources are coal oil and gas uh, limestone and dolomite also have carbon in them so these are the earth's carbon stores and we have aquatic biomass and ocean carbon stores. So we have some dissolved carbon that's in the ocean. And what happens is we put this carbon um, back into the atmosphere by fossil fuel emissions. So we're burning oil and gas and coal and that um, causes us to put carbon back into the atmosphere. Um, photosynthesis uses carbon, so it brings the carbon into the biosphere, 
but we um, we breathe and that puts carbon back into the atmosphere and then we also have um, diffusion from the ocean so this kind of goes back and forth it goes into the atmosphere but we also have some carbon that diffuses into the ocean so the carbon just cycles around throughout our atmosphere and land all right so we have nitrogen in the atmosphere and we have some nitrogen fixing bacteria that's in the soils and it will convert that nitrogen into free nitrates nitrites and ammonia and then um, we then the plants take up the nitrogen and the plants are eaten by animals and the animals um, excrete and that's decaying organic matter which puts it back into the soil um, also when living things decay that puts the nitrogen back into the soil and um, and then also the bacteria also give off some nitrogen to the atmosphere and so um, with nitrogen we also see this continuous cycle throughout our environment and the phosphorus cycle phosphorus is another mineral that um, plants and animals need phosphorus is mostly contained in rock so we have a lot of phosphates in the rock but as the rock weathers it breaks down and then we'll have the phosphates in the soil and those can be used by plants they need that um, nutrient and then the animals eat the plants and then animals decay and excrete and that puts some phosphorus back into the soil and then we also have phosphates that are in water and um, and that can go back up into the rocks and so phosphate cycles around phosphate is a slower cycle because it depends on the weathering of the rock but there are a lot of phosphates in the soil and so the the kind of quicker part of the phosphorus cycle is as it goes from the soil to the plants to the animals and then back to the soil from decaying animal and plant matter.